Hi, Jason here, and today I'm going to go over how to clean a carb. Um, this is a carburetor from a 1983 um, Johnson outboard. This is a 50 horsepower. Um, so I've already removed it from the engine, and I'm going to go over just how to take it apart and then how to clean it, um, and then also um, how to rebuild it, how to put it back together. Um, so I've actually um, taken it apart already and I've cleaned it out um, and I have ordered rebuild kits for both of my carbs uh, they haven't come in yet um, but I for the sake of time I figured I'd go ahead and uh, show how we disassemble it how it gets cleaned out and um, so I'll basically be taking it apart and putting it back together with these same parts until I my kit comes in so um, here we go here's the carb um, we're gonna start on the bottom and this area is called the, the float bowl and uh, this is where the gas basically sits the fuel mixture basically sits before it gets uh, sent to the engine and so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is if I would have taken this off is I'd probably go ahead and take out the uh, screw plug here right at the top and most of these screws can be taken out with just your regular screwdriver So in this case, I actually have a screw right here, and um, this is called the screw plug, and then it also comes with a washer. So we're going to take both of those out, set those aside back here. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but inside of this chamber is one of the jets. And the jets can also be taken out um, and cleaned if necessary, if you're having idling issues or uh, fuel mixture issues um, you may want to come in here and take one of these jets out now the thing with taking these jets out is there's a special tool to do it it's essentially something like a screwdriver only it's much thinner and it will go way back in there um, I would not advise taking one of these jets out with a regular screwdriver um, because these uh, jets are brass and they can break off really easily so I'd probably try and get the tool or uh, have a regular uh, marine mechanic go ahead and do that for you. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take off the drain screw which is at the bottom here. Uh, usually when you first take off the carb if you want to drain all of the fuel out of the carburetor then you go ahead and you remove this screw right here at the bottom. Uh, this also has a washer on it as you can see here the washer in this case is, is kind of well it was stuck to the screw but this one's coming off but you'll pull that out and that'll essentially let you drain out the the bowl here at the bottom so now that I've got those off the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off the bowl and so as you can see here we have four screws on all of the corners we're going to go ahead and remove those these carburetors are pretty simple they're pretty basic there's not much to them to be honest with you it's more difficult to get the carburetor off of the motor in most cases than it is to actually take the carburetor apart um, but you do want to know what you're doing so I suggest um, before you do anything especially when taking off any of the, the linkages that go from the throttle to the carburetor I would suggest um, taking some pictures of it, maybe draw yourself a diagram, make sure that you know how it goes back together because there will probably need to be some adjusting after you put the carbs back on to make sure that you're running at the optimal mis mixture for your fuel. Okay, so it looks like we've got all, all four screws off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the bowl off here. So there's the inside and I actually didn't do too much to this carb already. Um, it, it was pretty clean so there wasn't really uh, any varnish or anything inside this one. Um, so if you don't see any varnish or anything like that, then what I'd probably do is I'd probably use 
uh, compressed air to blow it out uh, before going ahead and using carb cleaner. Carb cleaner is fine to use. It's not going to hurt it or anything, but some people don't like using carb cleaner. Uh, you know, it, some people are allergic to it or maybe it affects their skin. Some people get sick when using it. So if you don't need to use it, I mean, if this looks like as clean as it is here, then I probably wouldn't worry about it. Um, one thing I will point out is behind the um, screw plug that was at the bottom, down in this area here, you're going to see a um, you're going to see one of the lower jets. I don't know if it's going to focus there, but that's one of the jets. And so to get at that, you would put your jet removal tool through this, and it would go through the body here, and you'd be able to unscrew it. I've already checked out the jets, and they look good on this, so I'm not going to remove that. But that's how you would remove it. And essentially, the jet goes in there and then up and out this this area here. Okay, so now we're here at the main carb area. And uh, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the gasket. Uh, when you get a rebuild kit, this gasket is typically going to need to be replaced. Um, the gasket here isn't in bad shape, but we're, while we're opening up, we're going to go ahead and replace this anyway. And then here you have your float. And the float is one of the most important parts inside of this thing because if your float isn't set right, then it can cause issues with your... Uh, with your engine if it's if it's not working correctly then it can cause flooding or you can cause stuttering or idling issues um, typically with most floats you want the bottom of the float to be parallel with this rim right here and as you can see without touching it mine is a little off so this could very well be the cause of some issues um, we actually want it to set closer like this so we want the bottom of this float right here to be parallel with the rim of this. And so that's not, so when we put it back on, we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna set that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pull out this pin. There's a little pin right here. This is what holds the float in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this out. Sometimes this pin can be a little difficult, a little tricky to get out if it's kind of seized in there. But there's your pin, and then once you remove it, then your float comes out. And as you can see, the float is in pretty good shape, so I'm, I'm not going to be replacing that. And then attached to the float was a little pin here. You can see that, and it's got a little spring on it. This actual, this pin right here, it actually stuck, it actually sits on the float edge right here. And then what happens is the pin goes down in there and then your pin goes in to hold the float in place. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move, remove that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, screw seat right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew this. Now you'll notice this, um, in most cases if this is really tight, you're going to want to get a larger screwdriver head to take that out because this again is brass and this can you can muck this up pretty easily. And you'll see that there's also a washer on this seat that's going to be replaced as well. Okay, and then we have a washer. This is going to go around this main jet here. We're going to go ahead and pull the washer off. You should have a replacement for that in the, ref in the um, rebuild kit. So uh, the only other things that we would take off of this carburetor would be these little plugs right here. You can see these little silver plugs. There's one right there. Uh, there's one on the top, and there's one right there as well. Normally, you would take these off to access the, um, the areas underneath them to make sure that there's no clogs or no uh, nothing clogging those out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave these in um, for now. You do want to take those out every single time you go ahead and you clean your carb, but I'm going to go ahead and leave those in for now. Um, I'll probably, when I go back to actually rebuild the carb for good, I'm going to go ahead and take those out. But essentially all you do is if you get yourself like a little punch or something, you'll uh, take a hammer and you'll punch a hole into the top of this and then just pry it out. They come right up. And then to put it back in, what I would normally do is I would take uh, something with a dull end. So maybe not this for example, but this will show you so you get the idea. You basically put it over top of it and then take a hammer and beat down on, the, on it and you'll pop that, that plug right back in place. But that's how you basically take care of those. And you're going to want to make sure that you take all of those off and that you clean out or check to make sure that all of these holes right here that these are covering 
are clean and clear. Okay, so the other thing that we're going to want to do is while we have it all open is we're going to go ahead and clean it out. Like I said, you can use carb cleaner. If it's already pretty clean, then what I would use, I would use some sort of compressed air. Right here, I just got a, a, a bottle of uh, keyboard duster. This uh, You can buy this at most any stores, Walmart or an off supply store. And what this does is this just it's compressed air. It'll blow it. And what you want to do is you want to go through every single orifice and you want to make sure they're completely cleaned out. So you want to blow through every one of these and I can actually feel the air coming out of here as I blow that. So as I'm blowing it, I can feel the air and make sure you get everything nice and clean. You want to go through every single orifice that you can find. Any hole, anywhere where any kind of varnish or any kind of sludge might get stuck, you want to make sure that you clean those holes out. And what you might do is if you do have, if you are using carb cleaner, you can get a carb cleaner with the straw in there as well. And you can spray it out that way. You're going to want to spray out the insides. And then you're also going to want to go back through. you're going to want to spray out. You're going to want to spray out everything to make sure that you got all of the little surfaces and all the holes complete. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to go ahead and put it back together. Um, it goes back pretty simple, so what we're going to do is we're going to first start with our screw seat. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my washer back on. It's going to go all the way to the bottom. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my float back in. Again, if you remember this piece here gets attached just like so. And that just gets dropped right in there. Then I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to put my pin through there. Okay, pinch the slide back through. Now if your bowl is sitting up a little too high, then you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to make an adjustment. And so typically what you would do is you would take this off, take the uh, float completely off, and you're just going to bend this metal area here. You're going to bend that until your float sits nice and level, just like that. Alright, okay, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our washer back on. The washer can really only go on one way, so we just make sure that we line up all of our holes. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our our bowl, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put all of our screws back on. It's important when you're tightening these main screws down when you're putting the bowl on, you basically you want to make sure that the bowl goes down nice and even. So what I do is the first time around I usually do each of the corners and I'm just going to tighten them barely down. I'm not going to snug them quite yet. I'm going to go through there and I'm going to do one corner then go across and then do it the other way. And then you're going to want to go back through and you're going to want to make sure that you tighten these down. Make them nice and snug. That's going to press that bowl down to that gasket and it's going to seal that up nice. The last thing you want to do is the last thing is you want air getting in through any one of these orifices. So whenever you put your plugs back in, any gaskets or any screws back in, you want to make sure that the gaskets and the screws are making a nice seal. 
That way you don't have any air leaking in there causing a lean mixture. So the last thing, or the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the drain plug, screw that in, and make sure that's nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my screw plug for the top and I'm going to put my washer on. And I'm going to go ahead and get that tightened down. I'm going to make sure that's nice and snug in there too. Okay, so once you do that and once you have all of your your plugs back on, you should be ready to go. Um, you know, if you are cleaning with a carb cleaner, you want to make sure that you, you get everything uh, sprayed down nice, get all the uh, grease and any kind of oils or anything off of the carb. And once you do that, you should be able to put this thing right back on there with the, the rebuild gaskets and you should be ready to go. So hopefully that helped out. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll do my best to check on it and answer anything that I can. Um, so this is uh, how you clean and put back together a carburetor. Thanks.